Some recommended prerequisites for this move are the bowl effect, handstand, opposite hand hops, swipe, and halo. The air flare is one of the most technical power moves, but it borrows a lot of different skills from other techniques. As with most power moves, a key component is to stretch. The more flexible the shoulders are, the less your throwing arm has to travel. Instead of having to hop a huge distance, you'll be able to simply reach and catch with minimal impact and risk. Good shoulder flexibility is absolutely necessary to stabilize both liftoff and landing. To improve the range of motion of your arms, try these floor stretches and this one against a wall corner. If you've got one, use a stretchy tool to help stretch the chest and back at different angles. Keep in mind that the development of the hip flexors are vital for maximizing lift for the hip kip when performing the air flare. To improve explosiveness, stretch by doing a knee lunge and reaching your arms straight up. You should also strengthen the hip flexors by doing various types of leg lifts. There are plenty of other stretches that help with back flexibility, but the two that I like best are the cobra stretch and the standing twist. Strengthen the back by doing pull-ups, handstand push-ups, and regular push-ups. Another helpful tool is the sitting row machine, incline bench press, Roman chair, and ab destroyer, all of which you can find at your local gym. Last and definitely not least is the straddle stretch. You can see that I'm far from getting a perfect split, but the idea is that the wider your legs are, the easier it is to balance when you're on your hands, since your weight is more widely distributed. It also improves the range of the kick. For example, you can kick a soccer ball harder if you wind up. The larger the wind up, the harder the kick. Without the necessary flexibility needed to wind up properly, your leg swing will feel weak and sluggish. Because there's so many things going on when performing the air flare, it's best to train against the wall so you can easily understand it. First, put the hands shoulder width apart. The hands can be splayed outwards at 45 degree angles like so. Then determine your kicking leg and your throwing arm. I rotate counterclockwise, so my left leg will be swinging and my right arm will be throwing across my chest to catch. Flip these directions if you go clockwise. Next, adjust the kicking leg so that it forms a 90 degree angle. Make sure your thigh lines up with the torso. As you swing the kicking leg, twist as far as possible until your ending position results with your upper body and lower body facing in opposite directions. This can be awkward for people and it doesn't need to be perfect, but just be sure to stretch extra if you need to. As your torso twists, you'll feel your throwing arm coming off of the wall. Allow it to lift off naturally and swing the arm to open up the chest. For me, I also notice that my toes are pointed as I kick. Once I land on the catching arm though, the foot will flex forward. Take note that if your body does not twist enough, the kick will throw your body off balance since it's too low. Getting enough twist will ensure that you kick up towards the sky so you can get maximum lift. If this is still difficult for you, you may also have to stretch the outside part of your hamstrings so it can extend to its fullest range. Sit down like so and lean off to the side. Keep in mind that the air flare uses an oval type leg swing, which is similar to a head mill or a halo. In addition, the single most overlooked detail for most beginners is the hip kip. This is super necessary for generating hang time, which helps with transferring from one arm to the other. Hip kip right after the swinging leg reaches its farthest twisted point. Timing this part is crucial to maintaining balance. Activation of the muscles on the back of the shoulder and around the shoulder blades are key here. The muscles of the supporting arm and back must push at the exact moment you hip kip, or else you'll break form and your air flare will look noodly. If you thrust too soon, you won't have enough leverage to transfer weight between your arms in time. It'll prevent your body from being able to turn over to catch itself. If you thrust too late, you'll kill your momentum. This, however, is a great exercise to improve overall control and coordination. It also helps to actively contract the hip flexor of the non-kicking leg to keep your hips from dropping. As you land with your throwing arm, consciously remembering to keep the hip flexor tightened with your leg extended will ensure that the hips remain above the body, which will also help with balance. At this point, it's always helpful to keep telling yourself to land in a handstand. Your arm should remain locked at the elbow throughout the entire duration of the move. Having said this, people may wonder, wouldn't doing the air flare with elbows locked impact the wrists or maybe it would even cause the elbows to overextend. This is actually not the case because if you do the hip kip properly you should be able to use that to your advantage so that it dampens the impact so that you have a nice smooth landing. A good way to prevent the risk of injuring your elbow by overextension is to practice hand hops on your catching arm which is typically the opposite side. 
Something to keep in mind is that your shoulders should curl forward and backwards during each round of air flare. This means that your shoulders should be concave when your arms are touching the ground, while shoulders should be convex and your chest open when you commit to the throw. Soon after you open up your chest, wait until your crotch is pointed to the sky before you hip kip. Timing of this is crucial to go airborne. Keep in mind that you should only be unbent for the split second you take to snap up into the air. Ideally, the body should be curling back to a concave position the moment your throwing arm makes contact with the floor. Crunching in slightly with the core upon landing will also help you catch yourself into the one-handed handstand. This is to simulate when the hip kip sinks downwards to cushion your landing. Now that we've gone over the technique with the wall, it's time to apply these steps. In order to properly set up the body's positioning, you must utilize the bowl effect. When you place the hand down, be sure to rotate the hand inwards so the fingers are turned towards the face. This will allow you to rotate more. The hand should be placed near the foot. Whether or not the hand is in front, behind, or in place of the opposite foot depends on your personal preference. For me, I prefer putting the hand in front of the foot. Swing your opposite leg into the air so your legs form a Nike position. The swinging leg should be bent at a 90 degree angle. If this is a strange feeling, you can train your control by comboing the bowl effect with the handstand. Once you get used to this swinging feeling, begin to pike your legs while in a handstand. This means that your thighs should bend at the hip to come towards the abdomen. When your legs hang like this, it forces you to activate your abdomen and lower back muscles, which are both key muscle groups for air flare stability. This slight adjustment is also helping to prep for your hip kip. If you don't pike, you won't be able to get the explosive lift you need. As you continue to get comfortable with the bowl effect to Nike handstand, you now must build the coordination to do the exaggerated bowl effect. For this, instead of keeping your chest face parallel to the floor, lean each arm every time your arms switch so that the chest opens up to face sideways. The hand that isn't touching the floor should be extended above the body. Slow the movement way down. The purpose of this exercise is to really take the time needed to build awareness for the core muscles that flex as your body twists. To further develop shoulder strength and upper back control, do one-handed bridges and use the incline bench press at your local gym. For your next exercise, swing your kicking leg behind the body so that your other leg skids across the floor like so. This is a great way to ensure that you're getting enough rotation. Notice that the legs do not spread too widely while doing this. When performing the air flare, the legs should remain relatively close together during the setup up until the moment you initiate the leg swing. Now that you know how to do the bowl effect to Nike handstand, have developed core control when twisting, and have also done rotation training, it's now time to do your first air flare. Make sure you wind your leg back to the point where you can't twist any further. The more you twist, the more power you will have for your kick. As you do this, keep in mind that you don't want to arch your back too much, since that'll make the initial air flare harder to control. The middle of the back should either be perfectly straight or have a slight forward bend, and the shoulders should curl towards each other slightly. Next, unload your kick by straightening the leg and allowing it to swing skyward. Make sure your leg is kicking upwards and not off to the side. If you're kicking to the side, you need to take more time to untwist the body before throwing the arm over. When the kick is done right and the correct amount of rotation is applied, this force will propel the body upward while at the same time getting the body to twist on the horizontal axis. Next, let's go over preparation for the throw. This part can be tricky since you gotta do two things at once. Once your torso has untwisted to the point where your crotch is almost facing upwards, you have to flex the back and the shoulder to shove the ground with your arm. Specifically, you'll want to contract the back muscles on the side of the non-throwing arm. Since I rotate counter, I focus on flexing the back muscles on my left side. Simultaneously, you need to hip kip. Both of these movements will help give you lift. When landing with your throwing arm, the hips should sink back down comfortably. If your hips are still extended at the moment of the catch, it will be hard to continue. Once you're airborne, throw the arm so that it lands directly under the body. This is where being comfortable with your opposite one hand handstand comes in handy. Ideally, you want to be able to throw your arm across your chest, but that's not necessary. Personally, I throw my arm across my face. In general, the lower you go, the harder it becomes, but the cooler it looks. Make sure that the timing of the hands is separated as you throw. A common mistake people make when starting is to throw both hands together, and this will kill your momentum. A good way to avoid this bad habit is to lag the non-throwing arm by doing an air flare, throwing, and catching with the other arm still raised in the air. 
You can also turn your head to look at your throwing hand as it passes across the body. I don't really do this since I'm already comfortable with catching based upon feeling. You shouldn't have to look at your hand if you practice balancing on your opposite hand, but in the end, this detail is really just based on your own preference. Take note that my hips are slightly piked when I land. This will help me regain my rigidity for when I want to hip kip for my second air flare. After you've caught your body in a one-handed handstand and have brought both hands to touch the floor, continue the motion by swinging the kicking leg once more. This time, the kicking leg doesn't need to bend since you're already coming into the air flare with plenty of momentum. Keep the knee locked and swing through to the second round. The last detail before mastering the air flare is understanding the breathing pattern. Most b-boys can get two to three rounds from one big breath at the start, but if you want to get more rounds, then that means that you have to understand the timing. The first thing to note is that when inhaling, the chest should expand upwards. This is done so that air can leave the lungs more rapidly and so you can maintain a quick rhythm. If you try to breathe in to expand your diaphragm, aka the abdominal area, it will take longer, which isn't ideal. As you inhale, you may notice that the middle region of your back will bend. This is an indication that you're breathing into your chest instead of your back. Expanding the chest when inhaling is alright in the beginning when you're first getting used to the air flare, but eventually you'll want to expand the back so the chest remains concave. If anything, expand both the back and chest at the same time. Perfecting this will help maintain proper momentum. It's also ideal to inhale with both your nose and mouth at the same time, since it may help with getting oxygen quicker, but that can be challenging for some. If that's difficult, just focus on inhaling and exhaling out from the mouth. As you breathe, keep your jaw only slightly open. Keeping it in a still position also helps maintain a compressed breath. You can tighten the tongue to touch the roof of the mouth when breathing out, which should create a hissing noise. This is meant to limit the amount of air that comes out of the lungs, which will help you keep going longer. Hold your breath while your leg swings down and exhale the moment your throwing arm touches down to the floor. Next, we need to practice our breathing pattern while incorporating the twisting motion. Simulate the breathing pattern by doing a standing twist. As noted earlier, I throw my right arm when air flaring, so as I turn to my right side, I exhale. Do the reverse if you do most of your power moves clockwise. After you've exhaled, take a medium sized inhale as you twist to the other side. Once you've got a good amount of oxygen and have fully twisted to the left, hold your breath and flex your core really hard. Holding your breath for that short moment will help contract your core so that you can produce a stronger kick. Release the breath once you've twisted to the right side fully. Take note of the rhythm of my breath. It should remain consistent throughout the entire move. For the first air flare, timing is crucial. As you step forward with your power step, take a medium sized inhale. Begin to hold your breath the moment you step back from your power step and hold it until you've caught your body with your throwing arm. This keeps the transition from the bowl effect to Nike handstand snappy. So that's our traditional approach. Next week we'll be going over the alternate approach. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and as always, thanks for watching and tune in next time on Jolt TV. Cool. <laughs>